All right, so uh, before we start building like solvers and do all kinds of cool stuff, we kind of need to define what a simulation and what better way to do that is with a, with a, with a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, <laughs> so um, like in Houdini 101, if you watch that, you know, I really try to avoid anything related to simulation, um, mainly because it really overcomplicates stuff. We, we did all kinds of cool stuff just with just procedural animation. And you can, you can make stuff look like it's simulated uh, without it being simulated. So now that we are going to dive into simulations, we need to define uh, exactly what a simulation actually is. So let's go to the next slide. A simulation is an approximate imitation of the operation of a process or system that represents its operation over time. And the important part here is over time. So we're going to do stuff over time. Um, so in a simulation, you're kind of always working on the previous frame. I should have probably put substep here, but we're uh, because like in simulation, you might have also have stuff in between frames. Those are called uh, sort of your your your, your sub steps. There are steps between your frames. Um, you're constantly grabbing data from the previous sub step, and then uh, you're going to be adding uh, forces to that, and it's going to iterate on that. So that's very different from the sort of the more noise and just procedural animation driven approach that how the one on one took. So let let's explore that that concept a little bit. So here we have a, uh, an example of a non-simulated uh, animation, kind of the stuff that we were doing in Houdini 1 with like the animated tentacles and stuff. So here we have Bob the particle, and this is his origin position on frame one. And we're gonna apply a, a noise, and that's gonna generate a vector, and it's gonna apply the vector to the position of, of Bob. So Bob gets vector applied. And then, so you might know, all right, if we're gonna apply this to the position, Bob is gonna end up over there. And you know what, Bob or actually ended up over there. Now if we go to frame, like if we're gonna do that, um, again, so uh, it's not going to take uh, this position into consideration when applying the noise again, because remember, we're not iterating in this example on the previous, uh, um, on the previous frame. So when we're going to do it again on the, on the, on the next frame, it's just going to apply it from the original position again. Uh, but the vector is going to have changed because maybe we animated the noise and then it's going to end up in a different position. So even though it sort of moves around like that, uh, it never considers the um, the position that it was in the previous frame. It's just all just manipulated from the origin position. Now, if we look at a simulated example, here we have Bob the particle. Uh, and Bob the particle gets a, uh, gets a vector applied and he's gonna move over there, right? Now, in the simulated example, we know of the position of this frame when we apply the next vector. So we're gonna apply from this position, the next vector, and then we're gonna end up over there. And then from here, we're gonna apply another position or an, uh, uh, we're going to end up by another vector and we're going to end up over there. And then essentially we just have a, uh, we have something moving around. So here's an example of, for example, here you can see it's a, uh, uh, it's a vector being applied and the thing is just wiggling around because it's not iterated on the, on the, on the other position. Now here we have the same sort of noise and this thing is now moving it around because it's constantly doing, it's doing the same thing. It's essentially just the same uh, uh, VOP, but it's doing it uh, on the previous frame. So that's why it's going to be moving around. So let's, let's have a look at moving around once more. All right, and you can see uh, now we're constantly flying around. Very simple example, but hopefully it gets the point across. So um, if we're going to do that, it's going to make it a little more complicated, of course. So in chaos theory, the butterfly effect is the uh, sensitive dependence on initial conditions in which a small change in one state of a deterministic nonlinear system can result in large differences in a later state. So essentially this means, you can probably imagine, if, this par if these particles are flying around and you're doing, for example, random values based on the position of the, uh, of the point or something like that, or you're binding a, 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 a noise to the position of the point. Um, and if the position changes just slightly, or if you're, if you're using the position to generate a random valuable, uh, variable to do something, it's going to get completely different results, which makes simulations, of course, a lot more complex than just procedural animation. So here's an example of that. We have a variable called my rent, and we're going to do random value based on the point number. So essentially just, if you don't know Vax, it's, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, but essentially this is creating a random number based on the point number. 
And you can see the random number just ends up being 0 0.417232. Now, if we just add one to the point number, just, just tiny, tiny, tiny difference, you can see resulting function here, like the, um, the like the, the, well, the result of the function, so many completely different. It is kind of a, so this is what you're, what you're gonna, gonna be dealing with when you're starting to do stuff over time. Uh, so this is an example of the, of the VOP that we, that we seen before. Um, here we have uh, the point number, which you can just add stuff to. For example, so you can add one to the, uh, to, to the, to the, uh, to the point number that's going to be randomized. Um, so as you, it's gonna, and again, the random function is gonna be completely different based on this input. So this is essentially just setting our seed for how our simulation is gonna look. And it's gonna just uh, fit it between a bigger value and it's gonna offset the noise based on that and it's gonna add it to the position. And then that is essentially uh, putting out the sort of the directional vector and then adding it to the position. And again, then we can just, so we can just, uh, if we change our seed here, like over here, this would generate a completely different animation or simulation in this case, um, just based on the one tiny value. Um, so here you can see it's moving around, seed zero. And let's change the seed, seed one. And oh, and it's gonna do something completely different. So, and two, you can see, Again, completely different results. So you can see how just a tiny value can make a very big difference in how your stuff is going to look. Here we're going to do it with tree, but you, yeah, you. I mean, you. Uh, the, the one quickly sprinted away. So you can kind of, kind of see, um, see, see the point. And we're gonna, we're gonna build stuff like this ourselves. Um, so let's let's actually start doing that now, and let's let's dive into Houdini and let's um let's let's explore how we can build stuff like that.